can Tinubu roll his joint? That is the question. <laughs> a former Bola Tinubu's presidential council member, you know, this is a top position, revealed that the incoming president has dementia, cannot hold a cup of tea, and is unfit to govern Nigeria. Hey! Hajiya Mohammed said this in an interview. Watch. You cannot relate to a person that has lost it upstairs. If he is physically unfit and he is mentally okay, we can manage. At least you know you can hold him accountable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hajja Mohammed said that she spent two hours with Balatinubu in London. And what she saw made her cry. What? I sat with him for two hours. Most of the time he was sleeping. You ask him questions on this, and he's talking completely different from the topic that you are discussing. Yeah. I sat with him for two hours in London. When you talk of green, he will give you an answer of red. <laughs> so, so because of that, Nigerians are freaking out. What is the big deal? What is the big deal? Yes. Here is Buhari as president being interviewed by BBC in London. Watch. One of your big election pledges was to tackle corruption, and this drive has seen you jail judges and police chiefs, even your own former national security advisor. What was the problem, as you saw it, with corruption in Nigeria? <laughs> did, you, did you hear the green question that the reporter asked Buhari? Did you hear that? Now, no. listen to Buhari's red answer <laughs> to the green question. Watch. The, the thing the Nigerian government will do uh, is to secure the environment. Unless the environment is secured, then unfortunately the investments wouldn't be coming in. <laughs> yes! So, didn't Nigeria survive eight years of Buhari? Did I say survive? Isn't Nigeria thriving after almost eight years of such a man as president? <laughs> now, Hajja Mohamed also resigned from the APC's uh, presidential council. You, you know the reason she gave? Her reason was that she could not continue to support Tinubu in clear conscience against national interest. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, I don't know when this woman went into politics. I have no idea. In fact, in fact, this is the reason why Honorable Kazure warned us about bringing women into politics in Nigeria. Watch the man. If the one woman contest in your constituency, they will say, will they go out to support our sister? They will vote for her. And they will come here one day, you will find all these women in this chamber. And they will mess up. <laughs> My good man. Yes. My good man. He understands. What has a clear conscience? had to do with politics. And which one is national interest? Yeah? Why is this one bringing up all the evil things that we have since buried in Nigeria? National interest. Clear conscience. Haji Mohammed said that Tinubu slept throughout the two-hour private meeting she had with him in London. I sat with him for two hours. Most of the time he was sleeping. <laughs> you see? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We caught her there. If Tinubu slept throughout, how did she know that he had dementia? Yes. How did she know that he could not carry a cup of coffee or tea if, she, if he slept all through? Now, at a recent peace accord meeting in Abuja, didn't Bola Tinubu sleep all through, all the way? Look at the picture. <laughs> yeah. Did that stop Tinubu from ordering his boys in Lagos to stop removing Shobere's uh, posters? No. And the posters of all the other political candidates? No. Hadjia said that Tinubu's associates feel that they must repay him for the political goodwill he showed them in the past. And, and, and that makes sense to me. Like, like this man who said that Tinubu gave him 5 million naira when he had no money. And that even though he knew the money came from the Lagos State uh, Treasury, 
<laughs> he felt that he owed Tinubu a payback, a payback vote, even if the man cannot stand on his own. <laughs> Listen to the guy. Uh, year 2000, Nations Cup in Nigeria. We were looking for money to start Kanaha Foundation. We knocked everywhere. Nobody answered us. But when we come to our leader and told him our problem, he answered us. Is that not Mwanko, Mwanko Kanu? No, is that looks like him. <laughs> now, here is uh, Hajia Mohammed talking about Tinubu again. Look at what, what she said. What is it that you will benefit personally for you to sacrifice over 200 million people? But when you talk to leadership of over 200 million people, you know that if you remove tribal sentiments, you know that he is incapable. You know that those hangers on are only pushing him, knowing that he cannot do it, and they will be the beneficiaries. Those who we rule are those around him. That is the reality. He is mentally <laughs> drenched. I said it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This woman over here. I can only laugh. Those that we rule are those around him. Who taught this woman politics? Take a look at the people she was referring to. Take a look. <laughs> those people pushing, pushing bulletin up. They will rule. Take a look at the other people. The people guarding him, holding him so that he won't fall. This, these people will rule. <laughs> this woman does not know politics. No, she doesn't. She, 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 she ain't got it. <laughs> How will Kashim and Shetima sit around and allow those legacy battle boys around Tinubu to rule? Eh? Do they, do they think he is another good Lord Jonathan and Yaradua? No. <laughs> <laughs> they, have they forgotten how, how, how he fought, how he dealt with, with um, Boko Haram people in, as governor of Borun State? This is how he will deal with this legacy by the boys around Tinubu. <laughs> trust me, trust me. When I say this, that woman, uh, Mohammed, is from the same school of thought as um, Bishop David Oedebo, who said that only sick people who hand over a sick country to a sick man. Sasha, tweet that out. No, he didn't say that. Okay, I said it. <laughs> what kind of illogical thinking is that? Africa, who did this to us? Who did this to us?